two films by Australian filmmaker Sam Galloway uh, are now on release on various streaming platforms. These films are Mutt and One Another. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking to Sam Galloway. Sam, welcome again to Movie Metropolis. Thanks very much. Nice to be here again. Good to talk to you. And let's talk about the uh, both of these films, but we'll start with Matt, because I, I did talk to you um, when the film was first um, released, uh, must be a year or two ago. Just tell me about the inspiration behind this film about dog fighting and, and uh, a woman who tries to intervene. Yeah, so actually the first in, uh, inspiration for that film really came from... Um, uh, the desire to make a really sort of um, traditional plot heavy um, uh, mystery story, but to put a bit of a twist on it where rather than to use a woman as a plot device and it was, you know, she, she had to be rescued or uh, quite often with those films, it was even that um, it, like, you know, it was a, a, a someone's wife had been murdered or something and they had to find the killer or something like that. Um, I just wanted to make something that turned that those genre conventions on on its head. So that was actually the the first inspiration, and then dog fighting really came after that, where um, it, it was an interesting backdrop to put it against and to to sort of explore and then to shine a light on. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be interesting if a, a woman was had to find her dog, and and th and then came the idea of like you know why is she so desperate to find it while she's expecting her first child and isn't sure if she's she's ready yet. I then sort of tiptoed a little bit into the territory of there was some sort of themes of prenatal depression in there, but I didn't really feel super uh, um, um, authoritative on that subject. So we tried to sort of like, it's in the mix, but it's not necessarily, um, yeah, what it's all about. So it's a, it's a bit of a, I'd say that it, that film's a bit of a soup, really. It's, I was living in Europe at the time. And so, I, I was watching a lot of very um, slow, a lot of slow cinema and the idea of something that didn't necessarily just hand you everything um, was kind of what I was going for with that one. Yeah. Okay. But still, you plotted it very carefully because there are a, a number of, of uh, family and personal uh, issues that uh, uh, intrude into the, into the story, hence leading to uh, the outcome that it has. Um, so uh, you obviously spent a bit of time fashioning the screenplay. Um, it was also being my, my first feature uh, and the first time I tackled something with that much um, – uh, scope. Um, there was a lot of um, uh, exploration between me and the actors because it is so character driven, and so um, I bumped into the um, into the guy who plays Harry, um, Tim Clark. Um, that he, he plays the father. I bumped into him the other day on another shoot, and he reminded me that there's a scene midway through the film that um, when we arrived on the date of shooting, I threw that scene out and started rewriting it with them. Uh, which he thought was um, uh, a little bit different. So I told I told the crew, cool, you've got two hours to light this scene. This is the rough blocking. Take your time, make it look fantastic because we're going to go figure out what this scene is. So it was it was very collaborative. And I think that's part of why it does maybe feel so rich and um, rich in sort of uh, um, human insight and um, detailed relationships between everyone is because um, that was very collaborative with the actors. Yes, yes, and and tell me about casting because Mia Landgren is is so good in a, in a central role, and uh, so is the dog. <laughs> that was yeah, it's such a big cast. Um, some people just uh, I was based in London at the time, and some people just did great um, uh, tapes, uh, like Adam Schmel who plays Dale, um, the the uh, the book. He 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 just did a great tape, and it was sort of just that was really enough. Um, Mia, um, I kind of had to hunt down a bit. She was she was hard to, to track down online and um, to, to lock her down because she does a lot of Shakespeare. And so she was touring with that. But I'd seen her work and really saw her as that as that character. Um, and um, uh, yeah, it was it, it, it took a bit to, to get her locked down. But I'm, I'm so glad we did because yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, once I once I started working with people that um, had done a lot of stage 
work. I really had a, a grew an appreciation for just how well they can um, stay stay in the scene and and stay nimble because yeah, as you might have gathered, I do like to sort of um, keep things alive and, and stay in the moment and throw spanners in the works and. Like we did this amazing pickup scene for the beginning of the film where they're they're going to the bar. One of the first scenes we where you see her at, at the bar. That that whole scene was basically we got permission to go to with a band to a gig that they were playing, and that was it. It was me, a sound recorder, the, the DP, and the actors, and we just went to the gig and then we started filming. And they stayed in character, and um, you know the um, the Angus ca- character he was uh, trying to book them for his band and so it was all improvised and it was completely reactive and um yeah it's just thrilling to work that way and stage actors have just that ability to just stay in it whereas i think that the people with a bit more sta- uh, uh, um, film experience um after a while they maybe fell out of character and then they were just having a yarn which is also good but it wasn't necessarily the character talking at that point yeah. <laughs> and uh barney the staffy how good is he <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's just uh basically he was a family dog and so um uh yeah it was i when we were looking at sort of who who, who we could use for 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 that character it was like well canon's here all the time anyway and he's just so chill and so yeah that was very easy casting because he was just yeah, he just wants wanted to be around us anyway. Yeah, uh, how how interesting and um, uh, and location shooting uh, is interesting because of course you you shot in in Melbourne or around near Melbourne in Victoria, and I noticed uh, Lilydale and uh, a few other places. So finding the right locations must have been uh, quite a challenge, particularly with the scope of of this film. Um, uh, when we were going into um, pre-production, that the producer Erin Stevenson uh, was, we were going through the script, and she said, uh, "You know, would there be any potential to consolidate some of these uh, scenes? Maybe a few things happen in the same spot." And yeah, I um, I think when you're coming from a sort of a low budget indie background, um, the there is a temptation to just minimize things and to keep things as simple as possible. But I also think it's a bit of a giveaway of the scale of the film. So. Um, yeah, we just, I, th- I think being this far out east as well also made things a bit easier because people were just happy for us to um, to be there. Yeah. Yes, yes. Actually, I, I noticed Matt has won uh, some awards for you. So you, you've had some success with the film. Yeah, so we we screened at the Capricorn Film Festival, and both Mia and Adam both won Best Actor awards for for Best Lead and Best Supporting Actor, which was pretty awesome. And I, I like to think that if two actors are getting Best Actors uh, awards, I mean that's kind of almost Best Director as well, really by proxy. You know, <laughs> like I was I was I was involved with that. So uh, even just in casting, but really, so it's. <laughs> Well done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, so that that is Matt. I, I don't want to say too much more because um, the film has a few twists and turns that people need to see the film to uh, appreciate uh, where it's heading. Um, let's now talk about uh, one another, which I found so fascinating the, about this. Uh, uh, well, the, this uh, two people who set up this uh, sort of role play relationship, which I found such an intriguing premise. Tell me about uh, how you came up with all of that. Uh, so I was at a music festival with my my fiance and um, uh, we'd missed a band that I wanted to see. And we were there with our, our friends and she jokingly said I should run away with Matt because we're the fun ones and you know we'd be we'd be much would be much happier together you know and I said well me and Louise will run together away together and we would be even more miserable and we'd probably start dressing up like you and pretending to be you and by the time I'd finished making that joke I had already got my phone out and started writing that down because <laughs> I was like that is probably the best idea I've ever had and we'd just finished shooting Mutt and within two weeks we were in prep to do a short film for one another and uh we shot that maybe two weeks after that 
and sections of that short film are still in the feature because once we finished shooting the short, it was clear very quickly that it needed to be the next film. And my visa was actually about to run out, run out in London. So it was either we just leave it as a short or we start shooting a feature right now. And so um, I would write um, 10 pages and uh, give them to the actors the day before we shot and we would rehearse over zoom and then we'd turn up on the day and just knock it out with myself and a cinematographer adam lewis and that was the entire crew for 90 percent of the film and um because it's a two-hander and it's such a sort of uh, um an intimate film we could really pull it off on that scale and still make it feel cinematic because most of it's set at night and it's kind of we kind of thought about it almost as a horror film in a way. It's almost like Frankenstein or something like that. Like they're, they're, they're turning each other into their own monster. Mm. Um, yeah. So we were watching a lot of, uh, I made everyone read um, um, uh, um, Wuthering Heights while we were shooting. Um, just I wanted everyone to, <laughs> to be in that headspace. <laughs> Yeah. I like that. I like that connection. It's a, that's a nice one. Um, yeah. So again, it, uh, you you've plotted this film very carefully because of the um, this idea of having a, a rebound relationship that becomes quite toxic and uh, uh, and the role playing uh, uh, situation and so on. So I found that um, how the two lead characters because it's really uh, a two hander how they relate to one another, what they say to one another. And what happens with that Erzatz relationship, I found quite intriguing. So again, drafting all of that, getting that script right, must have been quite a process. Particularly with the, that, that time limit, because it, I basically had to outline it and know what the the story beats were for each scene, but then just trust that that would all ladder up in the final film. And then the minutiae of it scene by scene became quite modular. And so it's got a very strong sense of internal structure within each sequence. And so we'd really shoot towards that sequence, like the um, uh, for a long time in the outline, there was just a sequence called, um, 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 uh, it was either drugging sequence or something something like that. And it's, it's where she's slipping him um, MDMA to improve his mood in micro doses over a long period of time. And the actors were like, what is this? What It turns into a different movie. And I was like, no, no, trust me, it's going to be funny. It's it's like a recurring uh, a day thing. Um, it's, it's just going to turn into Groundhog Day. And um, and then we had a few days shooting that. And they were like, oh, this is hilarious and very fun. And and then there were pickup days where it was just me and a camera and, and an actor running around sort of going to a laundromat or whatever. And, yeah, so it was very ad hoc. So the fact that the structure worked so well for you is um, it's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done on that. And uh, Vincent Adriano and Kirsty Peters are so good in in the central roles. Again, how how did you find them? So, um, uh, Kirsty Peters plays the ex girlfriend Eve. So she she's the character at the end who who pops up. Ah. Flora Ogilvie. Uh, plays the the lead um, actress. She's the British actress, um, and it gets a bit confusing because they all start doing each other's voices and dressing up as each other. So it's it is by design um, kind of uh, confusing. Um, so uh, Vincent was actually a housemate when we first arrived in London. I walked in and there was a Shakespeare and actor just like rehearsing in the room next to us. And to begin with, I was like, well, this is annoying. He's very really loud. And then um, I realized what a gift. There's a Shakespearean actor in the room next door. And we just started brainstorming ideas. And then, yeah, just before my visa was up, we we had a feature to make together. And we actually have a new short film that we just shot a few months ago. And um, that's almost finished. And, yeah, we'll be releasing that next year. Okay. So uh, tell me about locations because uh, finding that barge um, and uh, and shooting in the UK, that must have been uh, uh, an interesting experience. And, of course, some of the casting, as you say, is British as well. Yeah, because uh, everyone in London obviously knows how much uh, their, their location is worth because there's such a film industry there. So, yeah, if you rock up with a big crew, they know that they can start charging you. 
uh, luckily we we looked like a video crew rather than a film crew because it was me and uh, and uh, um, the the DP and um, I made a web series years ago about being a boom operator so I I did sound for most of it as well so we we looked pretty small so the few pubs and things we basically just turned up and said hey can we just um, shoot a quick thing in the in the in the in the bar in the back there and they're like oh what is it it's like oh it's just a little video and they're like all right and um, yeah like, just sign this form great. See so, yeah, um, and so it was very cheap. Uh, but then, for example, the barge was um, a friend's canal boat, and I had a little hotel scene written, and we were going to go to a hotel room, and it was really stressing me out finding that location. And then we had this other opportunity with the, the canal boat, and it's like, well, wouldn't it be funny if he thought that that was his idea of a romantic weekend, this cold, dreary little canal boat? And, and in his mind, it's sort of like, a more exciting version of a caravan um and so it was just being reactive to what was available and um yeah i mean the the main location was just my house and so we just locked up the the living room uh every saturday sunday for a month which my landlord live in landlord didn't love um because it's cold in london and you want to be able to go in your own living room but he could not <laughs> <laughs> uh the glamour of filmmaking i that's <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> and there's another dog uh, in this in this film um, who I was getting a little worried about. <laughs> they The actors made sure that I shot two versions, one where she actually uh, chucks the dog in the river and one where the, do the dog is fine. And um, in the edits, uh yeah they were right it was it was too much for her to have actually killed a dog but um yeah i um uh, it was because it was a friend's uh canal boat um winnie was just on the boat so uh she was just sleeping on a bed while we were filming and then she ran over and jumped on vincent's lap and it was like oh well i guess she's part of the scene you need to talk about her now just yeah and and then as soon as he walks in he picks her up and um because we've established that she can't have kids uh, earlier on in the film and she she mentions that she's 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 barren he picks her up and says this can be our baby and it's so tone deaf and wrong and 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 you read it on her face immediately where she's like no <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I i really like that sort of dark humor as well as the uh uh the, the way that um uh, that role playing sort of situation develops because I, I I did feel at one stage that it was going into something quite murderous and horrifying and uh, uh, and so on and uh, who who was going to do what to whom so in that case you uh, uh, you tantalise the audience very well yeah I was watching a lot of Scandinavian comedy which uh, yeah I think their sense of of it's straight comedy would be our sense of very very dark comedy so um yeah just borrowing from that a little bit films like um men and chickens and um more recently the same director did uh writers of justice um um and as thomas jensen his, his work was a massive inspiration for that tone and it's a really um it, it is a great way to engage the audience because there's the tension of what could happen but as soon as the bomb goes off the tension is is gone and then it's just the fallout from it and if anything i think um the film rides that tension right up until the very end and then it leaves you to imagine what would come next <laughs> exactly so is a sequel in the works <laughs> to another <laughs> they have they have they have talked about it and I, i've actually it's funny because both films are in a way really heavily about um childbirth and sort of about becoming a parent and um i've got i've got uh, i have two children now since um since making the films for the third on the way and suddenly i have actual insights on being a parent and there are some really um toxic parenting things that um i've noticed some because obviously one another is all my feeling my uh, toxic ideas and feelings from being in my 20s and having my first girlfriends and sort of not feeling like I was enough and and having bad breakups and really the story there wasn't about them being the monster for breaking up with me it was the monster that I became once I'd been broken up with just being an emotional wreck and just being capable of of you know then doing things way worse than just breaking up with someone I never threw a dog in a river but you know that's sort of it's the emotional truth of where I was at 
And so now I'm thinking, yeah, maybe there's some insights in um, the the parent child relationship that are, you know, they're they're pretty they're pretty toxic as well, where it's sort of like um, they fulfill you as well in a way, and you sort of live through them. So there could be a kind of helicopter pirate parent sequel in there somewhere. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> How very interesting. It's almost film as therapy. It's a, oh, oh, or, or a way of Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, expressing your, your, your innermost feelings and so on. Yeah, how interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, thanks to Bounty Films, Matt and One Another are both uh, releasing on uh, various digital platforms, and that's terrific for you, I think. Yeah, it's great to have them out there uh, because they were really – sort of fundamental uh, creative experiences. Since making um, these two films, I, I directed a feature film for uh, Flunk, the, the local YouTube channel that's um, sort of uh, um, about the LGBT uh, story. So I did a whole feature film for them and I'm attached to direct an, a, another whole um, feature project that may be being put together next year. So um, yeah, to finally having have these out there when you know there's a lot of really exciting stuff on on the horizon is um it's cathartic that's for sure it's been a long five year process to get to this point. <laughs> wow, wow, and and it's interesting to see that in your background you have certainly progressed from working on Auntie Donna's uh, show <laughs> as a boom operator while they were improvising. Yeah. Right. But 10 minutes of improv before the film even before they even start the script. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh God. And then 10 minutes of improv out. <sighs> wow. What 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 an experience. Well, that's terrific. And and uh, and uh, interesting to hear what uh, what films or sh uh, films you've got coming up. So that's that's great that uh, that that's happening. And uh, okay, so Sam, I'll just ask you the uh, last question. I love asking filmmakers. You probably remember me asking you this last time. Seen anything of late that uh, has impressed you? Film, streaming, anything? I saw a film called um, Smoking Causes Coughing. Have you heard about this? Uh, no. It's a French film and it's sort of set up like a, um, like X-Men meets sort of Power Rangers or something like that. And they're fighting a big rubber monster and uh, they all use cigarette powers like nicotine and suddenly he just explodes and it's really gory and ridiculous. Uh, but also it, it just goes like in directions that you would never expect it. And it's, it's like um, um, purposefully obtuse like it goes out of its way to become inaccessible but in a kind of delicious silly way where it becomes stories within stories and it's like you're suddenly watching crazy scenes like this a scene where a guy gets stuck in a uh, a wood chipper and uh, he's fine with it and they can't get him out and they're like well if you're fine with it and they just put him all the way through until he's a bucket of blood with a mouth and he's just like and it's five minutes of him just as a bucket of blood with a mouth and uh, it's like, is this, what is this? And I've never seen a movie like it. It was fantastic. <laughs> I now remember it. I remember seeing it because it's by a French filmmaker who makes these very strange out there films. One about a killer jacket, I remember correctly, and and the fly, or something about a, a, a fly that lands, this massive fly. He, he does these really odd films. <laughs> I think it's either you'd either watch it and be like, this is delicious or like, why does this exist? But for me, where I was at at that time, that evening, it was perfect. Yeah. What a great example. Of course, Smoking Courses Coughing. I, yeah, I'd forgotten that title. Well, excellent on that. But we, we won't forget the titles of Matt and One Another, which is now uh, both films available on streaming, uh, various streaming platforms. And it's been my great pleasure to be speaking to the writer-director of both of those films, Sam Galloway. Sam, thanks so much for talking with me. Thanks very much, Peter. It was good talking. All the best. Bye-bye. See you, mate. Bye.